stupidity. Some of the best ways to do that are there's this guy named J.L. Coven. I think that's how you say his name. And this lady named Sarah Cooper. They do like the best uh, fucking jokes and impersonations of Trump. It's, it's almost scary how good they are at it. And uh, let's see what else I want to talk about. Uh, Diana Chittister. She is a badass fucking musician. I really dig her shit. Um, yeah, here she is right now. Um, there she is. Uh, she is badass on the acoustic and guitar. Chittister. One of the things that I love the most um, about Sister Rosetta Tharp is Yeah, her, like listen to her sing and play. She's so just this, super badass, man. Kind of Sorry, she's talking about the song. There we go. She does this like percussion thing while strumming. It's pretty hard to pull out, especially if you're singing at the same time, you know. Yeah, that's a Sister Starp song, so you know she's a badass. Anyway, she's awesome. Check her out. Her, her fucking covers and her music. Brilliant. Amazing. Super talented artist. Check her out. She's awesome. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I got these, uh, these two ladies right here. They're in this band called, um, uh, what is this? Uh, uh, Lucius. And here's a cover of Strangers from The Kinks, right? The Kinks, yeah. And, uh, yeah, they have wonderful singing voices. Check them out. These, this band is awesome. So anyway, yeah, they're amazing. That's a good song, good cover. And yeah, um, the music that they create, not their covers, but the stuff that they actually create is really good too, so check them out. And um, speaking of covers, um, yeah, there's this lady. Her name's uh, Kim Barani. She does covers, and uh, check her out. She does a really good job. She's always badass in her covers. She's goofy though, but yeah, she's awesome. She's super cool, so check her shit out. Um, oh, yeah, and then Bob Forrest here. Yeah, this is another artist that I think you guys should check out. He's basically the Red Hot Chili Pepper that was never in the Red Hot Chili Peppers, but he's done a lot of great work, and, uh, yeah, his Bicycle uh, Thief uh, band here did this one album with Josh Klinghoffer of the Chili Peppers there, and these two guys together are amazing, and... You gotta love Bob here. He's a very good songwriter, pretty good singer too, and uh, most thing, most of all that I like about this guy is his personality. He's just like the most charming and fun guy, you know, and he makes you just feel better about how hard your life is, you know, like, like I don't know, something just warm and inviting about the guy. Listen to him. Here, listen. 
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the apocalypse. What more can happen? That's his son right Hills there. Hills are on fire. Mask wearing. Elvis has been home for a year. It's winter and summer. Um, but, uh, 20 years ago, 20, 21 years ago, 21 years ago, me and Josh made a record that it's one of the greatest albums ever made, I don't mind saying. Nobody heard it, though, so you know how that goes. <laughs> By now, if nobody still heard it, it's probably not going to be Velvet Underground Part 2. But it really is a song about drug addiction and redemption, and it's an album. Yeah, when I first heard his album here, I didn't think too much of it, but when I started, like, hearing the lyrics and all that, and th this guy is a very good fucking songwriter. He made a work of art here. It's probably the best thing he's ever done, and uh, they're probably going to do another album one day soon, so hopefully that happens. So, yeah. Yeah, he's really cool. Look up Bob Forrest. He's awesome. Um, all right. Uh, what else did I want to talk about? Uh... I kind of wrote down some of the shit I wanted to talk about so I wouldn't forget stuff. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, for the rest of the year, I'm pretty much relaxing and just kind of working, taking it easy. Uh, when COVID hit, I decided since I had a little bit of time off from work, I'd do a bunch of projects for the animals. I built all these cinder block houses for the tortoises out back. Uh, me and my brother, we set up all these fish tanks. My buddy Glenn is breeding cichlid fish, so we're kind of keeping them for him and helping him sell them and breed them and all that jazz and a lot of work um there's so much to that jesus christ uh but yeah for now though that's all pretty much set up and now i'm just kind of relaxing for the rest of the year there's this show called utopia it's not a bad show i was checking that out um it's about like some uh crazy cult that's trying to control the world you know um kind of like the trimpalumpas there but you know they're actually smart <laughs> uh yeah, I got three kittens. Um, they're getting bigger. They love me. It's nice. Um, I captured uh, uh, like a hundred tadpoles from a, from a pond. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. Now I'm raising a bunch of tadpole babies and they're turning into little baby toads. So I have a little toad army. So that's a thing I'm doing. Uh, breeding the dart frogs. That's still a thing that's happening, but so far, no luck, but they're still kind of young. I don't think they're sexually mature yet, so got to wait a little longer. Um, what else do I want to talk about? Oh, yeah, uh, Resident Evil 3. Um, yeah, I finally got it because, you know, it's like half off now in the, uh, what do you call it, the Big in Japan deal or whatever, but, ugh, yeah. It comes with the microtransaction multiplayer bullshit, and I didn't even fucking install that shit on my goddamn... Uh, uh, PS4. I just got the main campaign, of course, because that's the only good thing about it, about this whole Resident Evil 3 make. And, uh, yeah, I'm digging it. It's not as good as the Resident Evil 2 remake, unfortunately, and it's very disappointing that they didn't put in the same amount of effort. Fuckers. But the effort that they did put in is pretty good. It's not $60 good, in my opinion, but, like I said, I only paid 30 and it's not, it's not that bad. So I'm really digging it. Um, so yeah, that's cool. Um, the new Battletoads game, uh, it's actually not half bad. Um, it's only 20 bucks, which is kind of expensive for what it is for a game like that in today's modern gaming world. So maybe if you could find it for like 10 bucks, that would be a better deal. Um, it's a digital only game, so you can't get a physical copy, so that sucks. But yeah, the new Battletoads, the gameplay is top notch. Um, the visual art style and the frame rate, it's not bad. Um, you have to get used to it. It's sort of a, uh, a Cartoon Network kind of look, you know? Um, the Salt Rider upset. They they were expecting their, you know, classic uh, Dark Queen who looks like a porn star kind of cartoon animation. Because the old Battletoads games, the Dark Queen, she looked a lot like, uh, what's her name? Jessica Rabbit from, you know, the Roger Rabbit movie, <laughs> you know? So she had that kind of look to her, you know, big tits popping out at you, right? And, um, but th in this, like, they, uh, very much so cartoon, uh, cartoonied her image, and she looks more like Angelica from the Rugrats, and the Salt Rider all pissed off about that, Wh which is confusing to me, because a lot of you guys are pedophiles, y I would have thought that you would have appreciated that, but, eh, I don't know, 
maybe most of you guys aren't pedophiles. You're just assholes. So, but <laughs> make no mistake, a lot of you guys are fucking pedophiles. I saw um, that Soygon, Soygon of our card, that fucking idiot. If you're a fan of that guy and you sub to my channel, fuck you, get fucked. I hope you die. No, I'm just kidding. I don't hope you die, but you know. <laughs> If you're a fan of that guy, maybe, uh, don't. He's an awful human being. Uh, I heard recently he was trying to argue that six years old is an age of consent to sexual... Yeah, he's entertaining pedophilia, you know? Like, that that's that guy. And, uh, yeah, um, this dude I used to watch named GLL, uh, I liked him because he had a lot, uh... A lot of ideas in common with me when it came to the Halo franchise, but then I found out eventually that he was a fucking Nazi bootlicker dumb shit, and one of his fucking favorite people to watch was Soygon over there, and yeah, GLL, good job, man. <laughs> You're admiring a fucking pedophile. Anyway, <laughs> uh, uh, Mortal Shell, let's talk about that real quick. Mortal Shell. And I know when I say let's, I mean me talk about it, because... You know, <laughs> you guys aren't participating. You're just watching me fucking talk. So I'm going to talk about Mortal Shell. And yeah, I think I saw the game was like 30 bucks, 40 bucks. I can't remember. But yeah, um, it's kind of like Dark Souls, apparently, but not as good from what I've heard. So that kind of sucks. But and I'll probably get it eventually. But I think I'll wait for to be able to find it for like $20. I think it's a digital only game, too. I'm not I'm not sure about that. Oh, yeah, and I missed the Halo Reach 10-year anniversary. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, because on September, what, 16th, I think it was, of this year, that was the 10-year 10, 10 fucking anniversary for Halo Reach, and I fucking missed it. And it's funny, because the 20th year anniversary for Ocarina of Time, I did not miss that shit. I was down for that shit. But fucking, like, the 10-year anniversary for Reach... I probably wouldn't have missed it if Halo wasn't such a fucking joke right now. God damn it. But what do you want? Halo is kind of... The franchise is super tarnished these days, you know? It'll take a lot of work, a lot of time, and a lot of fucking miracles from 343 for that franchise to no longer be tarnished. Like, like those motherfuckers need to give us, like, like, like four or five halo games over the next fucking decade that don't suck that don't wallet rape with microtransactions that are actually fucking finished and have decent storytelling and cool game modes and they're packed with content and stuff like they need to do that to win back my appreciation of halo you know because right now bungie halo that's where it's at 343 halo suck my shit seriously I want them to do a good job, but it's so hard for me to be positive towards them when when I knowingly know that they deliberately try to wallet rape, you know? That's not that's not them going, "Oh, we made a mistake. We're trying to fix it. We're work with us, please." No, that's not them saying that. That's them saying, "Fuck you. Give us all your money and eat shit." That's what they're doing. That's what they're fucking saying to your fucking faces. And if you're fucking so stupid that you can't see that obvious shit, fuck yourself. Anyway, um, so, uh, yeah, uh, anyway, uh, my brother, he's gonna get some spotted turtles, that's pretty cool, <laughs> and I saw the Bill and Ted movie, pretty funny movie, I really liked it, and, um, uh, it's not as funny as the first two, I'd argue, you know, but it, it's almost as good, and, uh, yeah, it's just kind of a warm, touching movie, especially the end uniting everyone with music. I like that. That's a nice message to send. And I wanted to support the movie, so I bought it. Because, uh, you know, Keanu Reeves is the man. He's like the nicest dude in Hollywood. Did y'all know he donates like 90-something percent of his uh, income to charities and shit? Yeah, apparently on Matrix 3, that third Matrix movie, they were having trouble paying everyone working on the film. And fucking... Keanu Reeves comes to the rescue, he steps it up, man, and he's just like, I'll take a massive pay cut, I don't give a fuck, as long as everyone gets paid. Like, the dude's a hero, man, he's a fucking badass, so give it up to Keanu Reeves. He's not the greatest actor in the world, of course, but uh, he's entertaining, he's charming, he's good looking, he doesn't get old, he's cool, can't really hate the guy. And he's gonna be in Cyberpunk! Cyberpunk! 
You're breathtaking. Yeah, so that should be cool. The cyberpunk game. We'll see what it's like when it comes out. I'm probably not going to get it right away, but eh, I bet you it'll be a decent game, ultimately. Um, but yeah, uh, fuck my future gaming predictions. Um, remember last year, I fucking, like, nailed how the gaming world would go in 2020, and then fucking COVID happened, <laughs> and, and then a lot of my predictions got shit on. So, yeah, that's annoying. So, basically what I'm trying to say is, listen to me when a horrible virus doesn't happen. <laughs> Because I tend to have good predictions in the gaming world. Um, and I was mostly still correct, you know? The good games still mostly came out in the earlier part of the year. Because let's get real. What do we got to look forward to from here to the end of the year in gaming? Uh, the Cyberpunk game, I guess, if it doesn't get delayed again? <laughs> like, that's it, basically? I'm really not seeing anything else. Anyway, whatever. Um, uh... Yeah, um, oh shit, yeah, I had a nightmare, um, a few nights ago. I rarely have dreams, especially ones that I can remember that seem very real. But yeah, I had a dream that somebody smashed all these guitars, can you believe it? Yeah, that was, that was not fun. And then I woke, dude, it was fucked up, like, the dream was, like, realistic. Like, I remember in the dream saying to myself, in the dream... This is a nightmare. This this can't be real. This can't be real. But it felt so real. Then eventually I woke up and I was like, oh, good. <laughs> you know, like, good. Anyway, so that was crazy. Uh, Yankee candles. That's what I want to talk about. Yeah, you guys ever have a Yankee candle? These are fucking badass. Although this one kind of smells like shit, huh? Yeah, this one kind of sucks. Get like um, a coconut one or something, you know? But yeah, um... Yeah, if you got the right flavors, then, or flavors, smells, <laughs> um, then go for it. Yankee Candles are probably the best candles. Um, uh, yeah, Jimmy Stangle, bro, how you doing, man? Uh, you're probably mad at me for wasting half your time if you've been watching this by talking about guitars because you're probably not interested in that. <laughs> but sorry about that, Jimmy, but you know I love you, man, and I hope you're doing good. And uh, fucking, I registered to vote for the first time in my life, actually. Yeah, I know, I know, I'm an asshole. But I'm finally gonna vote, and I'm gonna vote for that cocksucker Bidden and that bitch fucking Harris. They're assholes, they're pro-corporate dickheads, they're hypocrites, they're pretty horrible people, but, you know, you know how it is, man. Lesser of two of evils and all that shit, and we got Tremp, the fucking Nazi bootlicking sweet potato over here. I'm tired of that motherfucker. He is by far the worst president of my lifetime. And maybe even the worst president of American history. This guy is a fucking asshole, and he's fucking everything up in this country. And I'm tired. I'm putting my fucking foot down. Me, my brother, and my my mom, we've never voted before, and we're fucking voting. Fuck this guy, dude. Seriously. Fuck Trump. And, and fuck Biden and Harris, too. But, you know, I'll, we'll deal with those cocksuckers when we can. But this is the way I look at it. Under Trump... He ain't going to do anything good for the people, man. He's a selfish asshole who only cares about him fucking self. And if you're too stupid to see that, then fuck you too. Seriously. Like, he needs to be stopped. He's a troublemaker. And yeah, he got the COVID and he could die from that at any moment or whatever. But I I'm thinking, you know, about the people of this country, man. Like, they deserve better than this fucking asshole. This lying scumbag. Like, tired of this dick. Fucking tired of this dickhead, man. Seriously. So, I want to assist in taking him down. And I think uh, other people should fucking really step up this one time. And I know, I know, I've never voted before. Maybe I should have. Yeah, that's an argument. But whatever, man. Right now, I'm stepping up. Fuck this dog shit president. I'm tired of his ass. He is funny. He cracks me up with his stupidity. That, that I can tell you that I like about him. That's it, though. Other than that, he's fucking horrible. Like, this guy is just the worst, I swear to God. And fuck his wife, too, that fucking Christmas-hating bitch. <laughs> anyway, um... Uh, so, yeah, uh... And RBG, yeah, she died. Jesus Christ. 2020 is filled with so many decent human beings that have died, you know? Like, don't get me wrong, RBG wasn't perfect, you know? Like, 
she said kneeling was disrespectful and dumb and that was kind of weird it's like why why are you doing that lady like <laughs> we're on the same team right come on Anyway, but for the most part, by far, she's done so much good things for women. I was talking with uh, Diana Chittister, actually. I got to talk to her. And, uh, yeah, in one of her recent concerts, she talked about how that woman made it so that fucking women could sign off on, like, mortgages without a fucking, their husband being present for it, you know? Like, stuff like that, you know? She did really nice things for women helped women move up in this fucking dog shit world, this dog shit sexist world. And that's a good thing, you know? And if you can't accept that that's a good thing and you think it's a bad thing, if you're one of those dumbass, salt right, bro flake dipshits, then, then fuck you. You don't know what you're talking about. You're a fucking idiot. Good God. What else did I want to talk about? Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, apparently the salt right are um, changing the term cuck to the term simp. And I disagree with this completely. This is fucking pathetic and stupid and cringy. And it's just like, no, dude, just no, no, just no. Like, like I like cuck. Cuck is funny. It rhymes with the word fuck. Um, my favorite f video game franchise, Zelda, there's these chickens. They're called cuckoos, you know? Fucking, I got a rice cooker from uh, from uh, South Korea, and it's called the cuckoo <laughs> rice cooker. It's a fun word. Cuck, 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 you know? It's a fun word. And then you can use it as an insult. Ha ha, you got cucked. <laughs> you know, it's fun. I mean, don't get me wrong. The Nazi incel dipshits that use it are fucking losers. Yeah, sure. But it's still kind of a catchy, fun little word. But simp? That's not as good as cuck. Fuck off. Fuck you people. You're ruining it. You're ruining your own little uh, stupid word there. Just saying. Anyway, this is probably the last uh, big video I'll do for the year. Maybe I'll do one around Christmas time. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see what happens, right? Uh, but, yeah, this is probably the last video I'll do in a while. And, uh, yeah, I hope, uh, you know, you guys are taking care of yourselves. I hope you're not supporting Nazi bootlicker trash. Try your best to not do that. These people want to ruin what's left of this dog shit planet. You know, this... The way I look at it is the world is mostly shit, but there's still some really great things out there. I showed you some of that shit in this fucking very video right now. So I get it. You know, life is hard. It can be hard. It's often very hard and throws a lot of dog shit in your face. But fucking you got to dust yourself off. You got to pick yourself up. You got to move on. You know, you got to live your life. You got to have a good time. You got to make the best of it. And... Maybe, maybe throughout your life you can help someone else. You can maybe even save someone's life. You know, you can do some really great fucking amazing things. And uh, personally, I used to be kind of a selfish asshole and a real ignorant child. And I've done a lot of growing up in the past few years. And I'm, I'm helping out a lot more. I'm donating more. And, like, that's great. So do stuff like that. Well, anyway, uh, that's the end. Uh, I'll see you guys later and uh, take care and all that shit.